Hey guys, Andrew from Model Flight here and welcome back to another RC update. Now today we're going to cover a topic that is one that is often requested of us, which is uh, soldering and also battery connectors. Now both of these things are um, stuff that we haven't really spoken about on this uh, YouTube channel, but we do get lots of requests daily for. So we're going to take you through some of the equipment that we sell for soldering. Um, we're not going to do a soldering how-to. There is lots of great videos on YouTube already that show you in detail how to solder and the techniques required to get the best result. But we're going to take you through some of the equipment that we sell to help you do that job. And we'll also take you through the battery connectors. Now, a we sell a range of these, all different brands, all with pros and cons. So uh, we'll take you through some of those and, and the best way to pick the one that you're going to use. Before we get into the battery connector side of things, let's talk about soldering. So to achieve a good solder joint, you are going to need to use the right equipment. Now we have a range of items here and we'll go through them right now. So uh, for those of you who are looking for kind of a do-it-all soldering iron, doing larger gauge wire um, and bigger joints, something like a real basic plug in the wall 80 watt soldering iron would be a great option. These have quite a large tip on them. So that means if you're doing fiddly smaller stuff, uh, it would not be a great choice. You would not have the accuracy and precision to do that. But for general joints like motor wires to ESCs, things of that nature, that is a fantastic option. If you're gonna purchase that, you might wanna get yourself a soldering stand. This just holds the iron when it's on. Obviously the tip gets quite hot, so putting it down on the bench could lead to burning things, damaging things. And it also has a sponge for cleaning. Uh, the one we have out over here sort of shows you the sponge, but you just get that wet, it expands up and you can clean the tip between solder joints. Another option for cleaning is um, brass wool. This is a, a great option without having to like wet a sponge. This lasts a bit longer. The temperature in the tip doesn't drop off as much between each clean as well. Um, and these are super durable and last a really long time. So another great option, not very expensive and a thing you'll probably buy once. Uh, the other option for soldering is a station. So these have a lot more adjustment. They're temperature adjustable so you can pick your heat range. This also comes with a much finer tip. So if you are doing um, fiddly solder joints, something like this wouldn't really be any good. This would be uh, significantly better. You can purchase additional tips for the end of it, ones with uh, thinner and thicker ends. So if you are doing thicker gauge wire, this still can handle that. But if you're doing uh, smaller joints and wires, this is much better. And again, sits on your bench, plugs straight into the wall. You can control the temperature really easily. Comes with a nice stand as well and a cleaning foam. So a great option. And again, one of those things that you're only gonna buy once, but is gonna make the soldering job significantly easier. Now onto the solder. Um, it's pretty basic choices here, really. 60-40 solder. Uh, we have a couple of options for sizes. You can get a 200 gram reel, which will last you a really long time. You can get a 15 gram tube. And the reason we have four of them out here is because they come in two different thicknesses. So there's a one mil solder and this 0.7 mil solder. Now the one mil stuff is a real general solder. It's gonna get you through most jobs. If you are doing smaller, more fiddly jobs, the 0.7 might be something that you consider. So again, if you're using this iron, doing real small wires, like maybe servo wires or something of that size, the 0.7 might be a better option. So hopefully this takes you through um, some information on the soldering equipment that we sell to help you complete your solder joint uh, with ease. Moving on to the connector side of our conversation today, I thought we'd take you through the most popular connectors that we sell and some of the most common options in the industry and, and things you'll find fitted to most cars on the market. So um, starting off on the left-hand side, uh, I have some heat shrink, it's not a connector, but I thought I would add that in there. Some of these connectors you, you may need to purchase heat shrink. If you are soldering up wires together, something you might need to buy. So we do have all the accessories that you're gonna need. One of the connectors that you will need to use the heat shrink with is a Dean's plug or a T plug. Now this is, um, was a very common plug. These days it's not so much, but a few years ago, that was probably the most common plug you'd see on the market with cars come pre-fitted with this. A lot of batteries came pre-fitted with these. A lot of people still like to use them. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of these when there's a better options on the table, uh, but it is a very common plug. A lot of people have a lot of batteries and, and vehicles that use this. So Dean's plug, if you want to, very basic, only comes in one size, uh, reasonable fit, doesn't have anything protecting the, the wire at the back. So you will need to use heat shrink to isolate the positive and negative from one another and make sure they don't short, but relatively straightforward to solder to. Probably not the easiest to solder to, the pads and the, that you have to actually solder to are quite small. And when compared to, again, other connectors on the table, probably one of the harder ones to actually solder to. The next one I'll take you through, again, these are not um, super common. It is a Traxxas plug, so uh, by the name, fitted to Traxxas vehicles and Traxxas batteries. So if you do wanna use the genuine Traxxas plug 
on, let's say, a battery that you're putting into your Traxxas vehicle, then you might consider changing the plug over. So we do sell those for those of you that want to use the Traxxas branded plugs. Moving on to probably the most commonly fitted plugs uh, are the E-Flight EC series. So the EC3 and also the EC5. Now, they are physically the same plug. One is just larger than the other. So it's the same soldering process. Uh, they look identical aside from the EC5 being bigger than the EC3. These are fitted to a lot of the aircraft that E-Flight sell, that Park Zone sell, um, a lot of vehicles that Armour sell, Axial sell. Uh, so they're a very, very common plug. Now the reason for the different size is different current carrying capability. So the bigger the plug, the more current it can carry. Therefore the EC5 stuff is fitted to larger vehicles or more high performance vehicles. Now these plugs are quite easy to solder. As you can see in the packet, hopefully you can see that well, the actual pins or barrels are not installed in the housing. This is actually a really fantastic option because it allows you to solder the pin or the barrel onto the wire outside of the housing, so you're not getting the housing hot for no reason, and then you just sim simply slide it through and they press fit in. Once they've press fitted in, you can't really get them out, um, and you don't actually need any heat shrink or anything to cover the backside up. They sit far enough down in the connector that they're not gonna short out or touch each other. So a really easy connector to solder to, one that's very, very common. And worth noting, the EC series and the IC series that we'll cover in a moment are totally compatible with one another. The only difference is the IC series have a center pin. That's for the smart technology. So if you're not using a smart battery or your ESC doesn't have smart technology, you don't have to solder up the center pin and you can plug the IC plugs into the EC plugs with no issue whatsoever. They fit together perfectly. Moving on to uh, the next set of plugs we'll look at. And again, a very, very common plug in the market is an XT60. Now we have the Dual Sky variant here, really high quality plug. Uh, comes with heat shrink already in the bag for doing these plugs up to cover the backside up so you don't get anything shorting through. A super common plug um, on a lot of batteries in the market these days and a lot of cars also. So if you're not looking at Horizon branded product which use the EC series, most likely you'll see an XT60. Easy to solder, have a nice bucket to get to, quite easy to use. So a really, really nice plug to actually work with. And one that again, if you have a car that's pre-fitted with these, the Dual Sky version is a perfect option. And the last plug we're gonna cover is the Spectrum IC series. Now again, they have an IC3 and an IC5. Much like the EC series, IC5 is larger than the IC3, and the EC3 and, uh, and EC, uh, the EC3 and IC5 are compatible with one another. The names sound pretty similar, so I'm getting a little bit confused. But their number means they're compatible. So the threes are compatible with the threes and the five with the fives. Now the IC series is a really, really nice plug to work with, probably my favorite on the table, partly because they have a cap for the back of the plug, so no heat shrink needed. You simply like clip the cap on. You can actually get the cap on and off with relative ease. So if you do have to reuse these plugs, they're really easy to reuse, uh, and the cap keeps everything safe and stops every, anything from shorting out. Like I dis discussed earlier, the actual housing is the same as the EC series, except it has an additional center pin. Uh, if you're not using smart tech, you don't have to use that center pin. So you can use these just on normal batteries and normal speed controls, and they solder up really nicely. Now, one of the reasons, and one of the biggest questions we have is about plug polarity, and that's one of the reasons I've got more than one of these plugs on the table. Uh, so previously, people would ask about male and female plugs. This can be really, really misleading and something that confuses people a lot. So I wanna take the chance to quickly go through that. When someone says male or female, when you look at one of these plugs, the housing and the pin will be different sex. So you might have a male pin with a female housing. So if you're asking for a male plug or a female plug, you have to be specific about what you're talking about. And that gets quite confusing. Someone says, I want a male plug. Do they mean the housing? Do they mean the pin? Well, if you were talking to someone about it, they could think you mean the pin or they could think you mean the housing. So the easiest way around that and what most of these brands have done is call them device and battery connectors. So that is super straightforward. Forget the male, female. A battery connector is strictly for batteries and a device connector is for anything the battery plugs into. So if you've got a charging lead, you've got an ESC, that would take a device connector. And if you have a battery, that takes a battery connector. So when you're looking at these online and you're looking for the connector that you need, you can buy them as just device connectors in a pair, just battery connectors in a pair, or you can buy a packet of two, which is one battery and one device. 
So that makes it super easy for you to pick which one you need. And if you have a battery, get a battery connector. Anything else is a device connector. Hopefully that clears things up. Hopefully this also kind of takes you through the plugs that we have on offer, the common plugs in the industry, in the market, and which one you're gonna pick and choose and then also the soldering equipment you need to get that job done. So hopefully this has been helpful. As always, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and we'll catch you next time.